Hey crafty family, it is me and today we are going to do some fun things and you're going to love it, I think. I don't know. You might. I don't know. You probably won't. Never mind. Just unsubscribe. Forget it. Whatever. Anyway, um, we're going to do some fun things to make some fun... I don't know. I honestly don't know the point of this, but I think it's going to be kind of cool. I don't know. But we're going to make this, which actually has a name. It's called Crystalline. I don't know who coined that name. I heard it on the internet and I ran with it. So, And then we're going to make this, which is really kind of groovy. And the fact that it's got little holes in it is because the third thing got stuck to it because I was stupid and thought they were dry all the way, but it wasn't and it made little holes um, in the paint. And then we're going to make this, which is like, you can see through it a little bit. It's like galaxy debris <laughs> i don't know but it looks kind of cool doesn't it yeah we're gonna make all this stuff oh and we're gonna make this this ripped a little bit there but that's okay little things that you can do things with okay so the first one we're gonna do is uh first thing we're gonna do is find a place for this stuff okay first one we're gonna do is the crystalline and what you want to do this um, on is a piece of wax paper or something. And since I can't remember because I did this like two weeks ago and <laughs> meant to do the video then but got sidetracked with all kinds of things, um, I can't remember whether I used deli paper or tissue paper. So we're going to do a little bit of both and see which one comes out better. Cool, right? And we're also going to do two different products to see which one comes out better. Not you. It's not your turn yet. So the first one we're going to do is with tissue paper. This is a piece of tissue paper. This has got a little hole in it. Let me get a different one. We don't want one with a hole. No condam contamination, damn it. Okay. So first we're going to do tissue paper and we're going to do it with Mod Podge. We're going to Mod Podge one side, let it dry, flip it over, Mod Podge the other side, let it dry. So at least we'll get the first coat on and we'll move on to the next one. So yeah, you guessed it. This is the process and I can't find my brush. There it is. Okay. It's a process. It's, you know, for you, it's going to take seconds, but for me, it's going to take all damn day. The things I do for you, it'll probably take me till tomorrow, actually, by the time all this dries. So what you do is you cover it with a nice thin coat of Mod Podge. This is just matte, matte Mod Podge basically, or actually it's my version of matte Mod Podge, which is Elmer's glue and water. So that's what I'm using. But you can use Mod Podge if you got it, or you can use glue and water. Either way will work. And I plan on doing this with Whoopsie. Whoopsie. Yeah, I don't want it to stick there. I plan on doing um, the first sheet, which is, this is tissue paper. This is white tissue paper. Um, with the matte Mod Podge. And then I plan on doing the other sheet, which will be the deli paper. All right, this is turning into a disaster because it's stick, sticking to me, sticking to itself, and sticking to the sheet, and not staying straight. Okay. Stay put, you jackass. That's the only thing about it, is it does not like to do what you want it to do. It likes to do what it wants to do. Okay, at this point, I'm like ripping pieces off. I don't care if it's straight anymore don't care. I should have done a better job of laying it down and keeping it straight from the beginning. Oh crap. All right, let's start over. Okay, I give up on that. <laughs> I don't know why that ripped because that didn't happen before. So we're going to leave it in there and roll the hell on. Okay. Anyway, nope. Wrong flipping answer, jackass. All right, we're off to a good flipping start. 
Let's try this again. Frickin' Matt Mod Podge. Hold your hand on it real tight. Don't fold up on yourself. I don't care at this point if you do or don't. You can burn in an inferno at this point, you pain in the ass. I swear this comes out looking cool if you have the patience to deal with unruly tissue paper. I honestly forgot whether I did the first one with tissue paper or deli paper and I'm starting to think that I did it with deli paper because tissue paper, I don't remember it being this much trouble at all. But however, the first, the or the person I saw who did this on YouTube and called it crystalline did it with tissue paper. So I had to have, and once you do it, once you get the first layer on and let it dry, it's fine. It won't do this anymore because it'll, it'll have hardened on there. And see, look how easy it was that time. Goodness. Okay. Once you get that on there and wipe off your glue, you're going to put this somewhere safe to let it dry for hours and hours and hours. Whoops. Sorry if I banged the camera. Let me put this over here to dry. Okay, so that's over there drying. Now we're going to do the same thing to a piece of deli paper, which I think is what I did initially. You're going to take some of this wax paper stuff. This is going to fit on here so perfectly. And that's not a good thing. I have to be careful that it doesn't move around or else it's going to glue itself to my little board. We don't want that. We don't want that. Okay, let's get our brush back out. And this time, instead of using the Mod Podge, we are going to use Gloss Medium. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to use Gloss Medium. Because I happen to have some. Right here. And we're just going to see what the different effect is by using the gloss medium. So, we're going to pour some in here. So, deli paper has the gloss medium. Tissue paper has the has the uh, matte Mod Podge, or the faux matte Mod Podge. Let's see what the difference is. Let's see which one looks, you know, like what. Let's see which one looks cooler. tell you that it goes on to the deli paper a little easier because the deli paper is stronger because I think it's basically deli paper is like tissue paper with maybe a wax coating on it somewhere or something that makes it a little stronger whereas tissue paper is tissue paper <laughs> with not no coating and so it just is rippable very very easily terrible and annoying that way now either one of these is going to be a bit wrinkly. You're not going to get the wrinkles out. So I wouldn't worry about trying to get wrinkles out. This isn't for that. And I think we got a good coat on there and I got some left. So I'm just going to slather it on and make a little thicker of a coat in areas just because I have it. And you know me, I'm not going to waste it. Okay, so there we go. Matte medium, or uh, gloss medium on this one. Now I'm going to move it, and we're going to move on to the next one. The next one involves paint. And we are going to, we can use wax paper for it. It involves paint and it involves packaging. So if you've gotten stencils, or something in the in with this kind of packaging on it where it's got like these bags it's already been cut um, because I used the other half for that other one for this so that's what you're gonna do is you're gonna get yourself a piece of the packaging that you have a bag it doesn't have to be this big it's just I have a big piece from big stencils that I have 
So if you've got like those big 12 by 12 stencils or something like that, and I'm just cutting off like any tape that's on the side or anything weird and just cutting it. It's not a perfectly even piece because I had to cut, cut pieces off of it and little bad areas of it or whatever. It doesn't have to be perfect because, and then here's like a little fold. I'm going to cut that off because I don't want that on there. So you want to cut it down to the size you want. Cut, you know, any of the labeling off or anything like that. And then basically what you're going to do is get your, and it works best with like metallic paints and glitter paints. It kind of, that's not big enough, is it? No. All right, stop it. Let's see. Eh, that's big enough. It works best with like metallic paints. Now you can barely see it, I know, because it's, you know. Oh, see, I've got the hole up here from where. There we go. The little hanger hole was on that. So, now you're going to get out a mirage of your metallic paints in whatever colors you like. and a brush of some sort and you're just going to well first of all I need to get the wax paper to stop curling up you're going to put some on in different places and start spreading it Start spreading the news. I'm leaving today. And that's basically what you're going to do. Is you're going to spread it. But be careful because metallic paints are not that opaque. And have a tendency to be, you know, spread too thin. So with those you want to be, if unless you, you know, unless you want it to spread thin and have holes in it, which is fine. You know. But just keep in mind that you might want to try to spread them a little thicker when you're using metallics. Alrighty. Now I'm going to switch to another color. Let's do some metallic teal. And it's fun to like mix the paints a little bit and you know what you want to definitely oh I forgot about that well I'll add my purple on I definitely want some purple okay it's fun to mix the colors too. Get a little pink in with the blue, in with the purple, and then just start wiggling them all around and making pretty. make sure you get down to the nitty-gritty because what's going to show is on the back so you can make it look as pretty as you want down at the bottom or at the top here but you want it to look pretty at the bottom so you want to make sure you get in that underneath layer if you want to mix things because you want it to look good underneath so 
So you can pick it up and look at it if you can carefully. And then just give it some strokes. I mean, you can use this side if you want to, but it doesn't look as good. You probably use too much paint, <laughs> but that's okay. It's all right. It's still, even when I looked underneath of it, it was still not perfectly uh, opaque. That's what I'm talking about. And then we've got some glitter paint. And we can stick that in there. This is supposed to be glitter paint, but it doesn't look like glitter paint. <laughs> Which actually the glitter paint would have been nice to put on first. But that's okay. Because you're probably not going to see it now. But anyway, you need to get the drift. You might want to put the glitter paint on first. That would probably make the most sense to put the glitter on first. I didn't think. I think I did. I don't know. No, I just kind of did a light layer. Anyway, it regardless of what you do, it's going to look cool. If you're using any kind of metallic paints or anything, it's going to end up looking cool. Okay, so let this dry completely. Definitely, you want it to dry completely. So you're going to set it aside and let it dry. Our final fun we're going to have, I'm going to use this rubber mat on top of here. Because this is a good way to do this. Um, you want, I don't, I've not done it on wax paper, so this time, I don't know if it works. I'm sure it does. I'm sure it'll be fine on wax paper. I'm just cleaning it off because it feels all pretty because I was using embossing powder on it earlier. Now how I got this is you can use um, either gloss or matte medium or Mod Podge, something like that. I think it, do, it, you know, it doesn't matter um, necessarily, but you need some sort of something like this. You know what I mean? Either I would probably say the gloss would look the best. I don't remember what I used on this, but I'm going to assume the gloss would work the best. And then you're going to pick out five or six paints, you know, colors of paint that you like. So I've already got, you know, these here. I'm obviously going to grab some of my glitter paint as well. I'm going to get some gold glitter paint. I've even got some black glitter paint would look cool. Some regular metallic gold. Some blue metallic gold. Some red metallic gold. So you're just going to get all kinds of metallic going on. And you're going to need a cup. Because we're kind of doing like a pouring method. But instead of doing it onto a canvas, we're going to do it onto something where we can peel it off and use it because it's fun that way. <laughs> All right, so gloss medium. Get this out of the way. Oh, by the way, the reason why, if you can see all this texture-like stuff right here, the reason for that is because I was using paint that was really thick. Some of this is metallic paint, but some of them, some of it is not metallic paint. Why can't I talk today? And it's paint that was really thick. So make sure that your paint is not super thick before you do this. Because even though we're going to kind of mix it, we're not going to mix it enough to get it out. If it, to get it from being clumpy to smooth. So make sure your paint is not clumpy. If it's clumpy, then you need to mix it well, add a little bit of medium to it, and mix it to smooth it out. So, just an FYI, because I know that, like, for instance, my, I think this was folk art that's in here. Folk art paint is extremely thick, and that paint, you have to smooth it out, because, I mean, unless you like the bumps, but I was going for a smoother kind of look, but unfortunately... I had a couple of different paints that were the folk art brand and they were too thick and I didn't realize it before I poured them in. 
you want it to pour kind of like how I was pouring those metallic paints on the plastic and how it was pouring right out you want it to be like that you don't want it to be like a big blob um, because we're not going to be mixing this completely we're going to be mixing it like half partially and so here's my thing and we're going to need some water too because we're going to water the uh we're going to water the acrylic medium down so that's the first thing we're going to do we're going to put some acrylic medium we're going to fill this up like a quarter of the way with acrylic medium or gloss medium you can use gl glossy mod podge you can use matte mod podge if you want to and we're going to fill it with a little water and we're going to mix it up and I might have put a little too much water or it's perfect can't tell mix it up well before you decide if it's too much water because you kind of want it to be able to pour that's kind of the point of this we're doing a pouring basically one of those pouring canvases except we're not doing it on a canvas we're just gonna do it on a piece of silicone because what's cool about this is when you're done with it you can like rip it and rip pieces and make little like texture you can probably uh, die cut shapes out of it but it's really cool looking especially like where it where it poured a lot smoother the bumps are is pretty cool too and believe me I'll use it this is of course where the thin edges were um, but it ends up looking really cool it might not look it in the picture but trust me it looks really cool I gotta get these off of here because they're driving me nuts and you want to make sure that your silicone mat or your wax mat is very clean and has no like stuff on it no little pieces of anything everything needs to be clean and smooth and ready to go in fact I do want some more of this and water because I want a little bit more filling it up almost halfway rather than just a quarter of the way but I mean you can use a different size cup obviously you don't have to use a prescription bottle the purpose of this is to give some of this clear space to give some of this translucent space that's in here which there should be more of actually which is why I'm doing it this way you want some of that translucent space and using the gloss medium will give you will kind of give you that otherwise it, you know you could do it without it and just be a solid thing but okay so that's good in fact it might be need a little bit more water I want it a little bit like the consistency of, I don't know, <laughs> runny pancake batter. Still sticking to my stick a bit but I think it'll be okay I think it'll be okay okay so now you're gonna add your paint and you're just gonna add one color after another and of course you know it's up to you how much you want to add of each color they're well shaken and obviously that you've checked to make sure that they are not too runny 
or not too thick, I mean. Sorry, I didn't mean to say runny. This might be way too much. If it is, I have the cap for this. I can just save it. Okay, now, that's all I'm going to put in here. I've got like bits of dry paint on here. Come on. Now, I'm going to only stir this a tiny bit. I'm not going to stir the whole thing. I'm just going to do this. One, two, three, four, something like that. Not much. And now I'm going to pour it on my mat and just kind of pour it out. Pour all of it out. And if some of the glue is by the bottom, you can move that in to this, you know, wherever. I probably even mixed it too much. We're just making a basically a, just an acrylic skin. And then you're just going to help it and just spread it out. Spread it out where you want it. You obviously don't want it this thick. So you want to spread it out. Now this is going to take a very long time to dry. This is not going to dry, you know, in one day. I need something bigger to spread it out with. It is obviously not going to dry today. It might even take three days to dry. I'm not putting any pressure on this thing that I'm using. I'm just spreading it and I'm probably, I probably like way incorporated the paint too much. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have, um, what do you call it? Mixed it as much as I did, but now I'm trying to spread it out. I definitely shouldn't have mixed it. So you'll know not to mix it so much. Like put your thing in and just go zoop and that's it. And then spread it out because most of your mixing is gonna happen on here that's okay it's still gonna look cool I'm just trying to fill up any holes I don't care if it's a little lumpy or bumpy it'll kind of settle itself out and then you could take this and oh, my book isn't here oh poo well I'll move this out of the way I'm gonna take this and go sit it on my dining room table because luckily I can probably carry it. Okay. So I've got my my book here. So yeah, you definitely don't want to spread it as much as I spreaded mine. I mean, not spreaded. Not spread. Um, mix. Like I said, don't mix it as much as I mix mine. I've literally got this all over my hands now. Because the less you mix it, the better it's going to be when you pour it. Because since you have to spread it with your um, with a spreader or a credit card or something, you're definitely going to want to let it let the mixing happen on your on your palette. So mine won't come out as nice as yours will. Mine came out nice the first time because I didn't, I don't think I mixed it really at all much. So that's why it came out so cool. A little lumpy, but cool. So that's how we do that. So, why did I try to put that on my water bottle? I don't know. So now, through the magic of whatever it is, I am going to 
um, come back when the first layer on the tissue paper and the deli paper is dry and then we will put the second layer on the back and then also we will see and then we will do that and then the next time we'll come back everything will be dry and ready to go so i will see you for the next layer of mod podge and uh, gloss medium be right back so now we've got a dry one and the problem i'm having with this is and something i had to do this is the um the Mod Podge on the tissue paper. I had to stick a popsicle stick under it and kind of do this to get it to unlatch itself from the wax paper because apparently it didn't like that. So if you have like a silicone mat or the Tim Holtz like mat or a non-stick mat is better than using wax paper because apparently it wants to stick to the wax paper. I mean it'll come off but you might have a rip or two in it which I do here. Um, kind of a pain in the butt and I don't know why it's wax paper probably because I have the cheap wax paper that's crap <laughs> but a non-stick or silicone mat is always better it ripped a little bit and it's a little tiny bit damp there but um It'll be fine this time because we already have a layer on there, so it shouldn't stick again. But I'll get a new sheet. I'm just going to uh, heat up this edge over here. I didn't want to heat it up while it was on the wax paper because then the wax paper would give another reason for it to stick. Because the wax on the wax paper would melt into the back of the paper and it could cause another problem. So that one's now dry. So now I'm going to turn it over. And we're going to put the Mod Podge on the back here. First, we're going to put some more wax paper down and hope that this time it doesn't stick. It shouldn't because now it won't pen the glue is not going to penetrate all the way through. So it shouldn't stick this time. Shouldn't. I'm not saying it won't, but it shouldn't. But we'll see. <laughs> Ooh, this glue is getting hard to open. I need to clean the... Definitely need to clean the lid on that. It's getting about time to do it. Now you can do this to your napkins. Obviously we've done that. Um, but this opens up some possibilities to do things with. Um like stamping on or alcohol inks watercolor to just give a different look i mean we're going to play around with it and see what we can do with it once we got it done you know it just it just opens up a new something you know what i mean like we have all kinds of different things to play with but it's a cheap way because Pretty much everybody has some tissue paper or some, you know, and or deli wrap. So this just is another thing, you know, it's another thing to do with it to just see what would happen to get different textures. And that's what we're all about. You know, we like to get those different textures as mixed media artists. That's our thing, you know, let's see what kind of texture we can get out of this. Let's see what kind of texture we can get out of that. <laughs> that's kind of what we do. Okay, so this one has a couple of little wet spots, but I'm not going to dry it with the heat gun until it's off of the wax paper. And again, this might have stuck a little bit, but not as much because, again, deli paper has some wax in it. So wax on wax doesn't stick as much as tissue paper, especially considering how cheap this wax paper is. It's not your quality wax paper it's dollar store wax paper which does the job but you know you get what you pay for so i'm going to take this off see it comes off much easier to the point where i'm even going to use the same piece of wax paper but first i'm going to dry it dry any wet spots on this and I will say something about gloss medium. Gloss medium to me is one of the more stickier mediums. In other words, when it dries, 
it likes to stick and it, it'll stick to yourself and it, like it'll stick to each other so if you have a page in an art journal and you know you've put gloss medium on both sides and you close the book the likelihood of your pages sticking is even if it's dry is very good which is why i always recommend that you don't ever seal a page with gloss medium and seal it with clear gesso clear gesso has tooth to it which makes it so that it will repel each other it's not going to stick to each other so just a just a, a fyi and i stuck the wax paper into the other sheet and that was smart wasn't it now let me wipe this off real quick well, that was brilliant it's fine i'm just gonna wipe it off and consider that done okay so yeah i definitely don't you know um think that putting gloss medium as a sealer is a good idea unless it's something that's not going to touch something else you know like you're not putting a closing a book on it or what have you we'll start with that much and I always advise people to experiment like this as well um you know don't 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 leave it to everybody else making the videos to do things sit down and think about things and be like what can i do with this what would happen if i did this you're not going to hurt anything i mean you're not going to hurt anything by trying different things i've said this before be your own inventor you know what i mean come up with something play with your stuff don't just let it sit there that's why i made that you know screw it and do it you know same thing with with messing around with your supplies mix a couple different types of paint together mix a couple different mediums together try different things you know think oh what would happen if i you know did this or did that or whatever you know what i mean like come up with you know your own stuff you can do it don't be afraid to play i mean that's what the, all this stuff is here for it's for you to play with you spent money on it you know on your supplies utilize them make secondary supplies out of the supplies that you have by mixing things together and experimenting i need just a drop more put it on my brush because I guarantee you'll come up with something interesting if you play around but you can't come up with anything interesting if you don't do it and don't try all right I'm gonna let that sit and dry real well it'll probably take a couple hours as it did before or at least an hour or so and then we will come back and I will what I'll do is since this will be dry the next time I come back I will come back when this is dry when the other one's dry when other the other painted ones are dry and we'll see all of them together and how they came out and then we'll play and see what we could do with them so um, or actually you know what maybe we'll do that in a part two so this will be part one and in part two we'll see how everything is dried and how everything looks and then we'll play with it we'll stamp on it do all that kind of fun stuff so i'm going to end this video right here and this will be the end of part one so make sure you you look for part two i will put in the end screen things that you'll see in a second um that'll show up i will put the link to um hopefully the link to part two will be there if not it'll be in the description below so look for that and check out part two and make sure you do what you love love what you do be nice people and i'll see you there bye mm.